These are the plaintiffs, Jennifer and Tom. Jennifer says she and Tom hired the defendant to cater their wedding, and they were horrified because the woman didn't make enough food, and their guests had to order pizzas from a local restaurant. They reached out to the defendant. This woman has ignored them for two years, and enough is enough. So they're suing for a full refund of the $3,000 they paid her. This is the defendant, Mika. She says the plaintiff's guests were an unruly bunch who began eating before the food was served. But she had plenty of food for them anyway. The plaintiffs ended up extending the party by a few hours, and she heard some of the younger guests ordered some pizzas. But how's that her problem? Bottom line, she's not giving anyone a refund because she did an excellent job. She's accused of not having enough grub to go around. All parties, please raise your right hands. The People's Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Marilyn Milian is now presiding. Litigants have been sworn, Your Honor. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. Okay, Ms. Jennifer and Mr. Tom, you are suing Ms. Mika and her catering company for $3,000, including a refund of all of the money that you paid for the catering for your wedding, as well as some other miscellaneous items. Okay, let me hear from, let's hear from Jennifer, Ms. Jennifer. So we met the defendant in 2018 through a mutual friend. Uh, we were looking for uh, wedding vendors and she came highly recommended. So um, we became friends on Facebook and we ended up meeting in January to sign a contract with her for our wedding in 2019. Okay. Um, everything was going great up until the day of the wedding, and that's when things started to fall apart. Well, let's talk beforehand. Did you actually sign a contract with her specifying what you wanted to be served and everything? That was all within our Facebook Messenger conversation. Okay. So, in other words, everything's on Facebook as opposed to in a contract. Is that what you're trying to say? Well, yeah. Okay. The menu, the actual menu itself was. But uh, I can't show you any of our Facebook conversations because she blocked me in February of 2019 or 20, 2020. Okay. So according um, to you, there's several things that were supposed to be served that weren't such as. Yes. Um, so we were supposed to have seven different kinds of tea sandwiches. None of those sandwiches were served. Um, we were supposed what, to have... What seven different kinds of... See, you know, we're kind, kind of at a loss because typically you'd show me your contract so I could see that what you're saying yeah. about the seven different kinds of... So what are you... So, look, tell me what to look at that you're looking at besides your own notes. Uh, there was a Facebook conversation between us with the couple of, like, two weeks before the wedding, Mika reached out to me and said, hey, I'm at the restaurant supply store. Um, can you resend me a copy of the menu so I can pick up everything? Okay, and that, so I sent her that. And you sent her that how? Through Facebook Messenger. So can I that's, see that? That's how we, yes, that's the so final So this is the menu. final one. All right, let yeah, me see if we can agree on that. Ms. Mika, would you agree that this was a, uh, a message that was sent to you with all of the stuff that you, that you and she had agreed on? Um, yes, that was a, a, a menu that she sent to me. We hadn't finalized it, but it was understood that this is the idea that she had for the brunch. Yes. OK. Ham, turkey, tuna, egg, chicken, avocado and black pepper, cucumber and cream. OK. All right. So, so there were supposed to be to seven different kinds of tea sandwiches. And how many were there? Zero. Zero tea we sandwiches. We had no sandwiches. OK, go on. Um, we were supposed to have chicken and waffles that so were supposed to be like sandwiches as well. Um, Mika offered to make the waffles table side so people could see them being made as they walked up. That didn't happen. They were just sitting in the sternos getting soggy. Um, there were supposed to be 70 pounds of scrambled eggs and um, we didn't have enough to even make it through halfway through our breakfast or brunch service. How, what time did um, the food service start? was supposed to start around 11. Uh, what time did it yeah, start? Yeah, around 11. A little bit after that because our ceremony ran long. But also Mika locked the doors to the venue <clears throat> and um, we had to have our officiant go and unlock the doors. There's people, after we were done with our ceremony, we went out onto the dock to take photos with the photographer and all of our wedding guests were meant to go inside and um, use the photo booth and the DJ was set up and stuff. And they weren't able to go inside because she locked the door. So Marcus, our officiant and wedding coordinator, went and 
opened the door so people could go in. How long could that have taken? People were outside for probably about 20 minutes 20, to yeah. half an hour. Now, according to you, Ms. Mika, uh, according to you, Ms. Mika, um, people came in before they were supposed to. What time did you think yes. people were supposed to be coming in? I was told that um, the guests would be coming in at a, like around 1030 for mimosas and donuts and card, like a card game or something. And what time, according to you, did the guests come in? The guests uh, came in probably about 945. They lined up at 930 to walk, I guess, you know, do the proceedings to the altar. And the actual ceremony was over in like eight minutes. You know, they said their I do's, I guess, or whatever. And it was very quick. And then they were coming back inside the venue. Okay. Uh, Mr. Tom, how do you remember your wedding? <laughs> the ceremony was a lot longer than eight minutes, that's for sure. Okay. Do you remember what time you started, oh. Ms. Jennifer? Started around 1030. I showed up a half an hour late. Wow. Everybody's got a very different memory. Now let's talk about the food. When did you first realize, uh, one of your biggest complaints is that there wasn't enough of it. So when yeah. did you first realize that there wasn't enough food? Were people complaining in front of you or was this people after the were wedding? leaving. Yeah, people were leaving early because uh, we had too much alcohol, not enough food. And people were dancing and having fun. But um, like I have a family came from Long Island. They drove from Long Island in the morning. So they left at probably like seven. Uh, and then they weren't fed all day. So they ended up leaving my wedding at like two, three o'clock because they just couldn't. Well, what, until what time was your wedding um, reception going from 11, according to, to you, till when? Supposed to go until five. Wow. What are we going to do all that time? Five, six hours of reception? Does that, is that, I don't know. It sounds horrifying to me now. Maybe when I was young, it would sound great. That would have sounded better. Six hours? <laughs> I guess. do that. Like, uh, you know, like I'd be like the family from Long Island. Oh, I got, got a long drive ahead of me. Six hours. All right. So when do you learn that there's a problem? Um, probably about halfway through the reception. I was blissfully unaware. I was dancing. I was having a good time. But when people started leaving, um, when did people start leaving? When you like, say halfway through the reception, when did people start leaving? Probably after the cake, which is normal. But yes, I did it have is. Family. <laughs> yeah. But so the people that didn't leave early, like the DJ was there until five. We had to order pizza for those people because they were drunk and there weren't, there wasn't enough food. Right. But don't you expect to have, if, if you start your party at 10 or 11 and they yeah. have, you're like, well, you kind of expect by five or six, if it's still absolutely. going strong, that you might need some pizza. Yeah. But you're suing absolutely. her for the pizzas. Because I know that at your own wedding, you probably don't eat and you're not noticing this and nobody's complaining to you. Uh, but then you find out later. How is it you find out later then? Did people actually comment to you? Yeah, it was a couple days after the wedding. Um, we started getting calls from people and they were like, we had a great time. You guys looked beautiful. Um, but... <clears throat> there wasn't enough food and it was a little Who my, does my that? mom was like what kind of friend does that <laughs> calls my it mom. right and now that the wedding's 48 <laughs> hours old let me just tell you your wedding sucked i mean you know no it wasn't that it sucked it was the, i was, it was starving a during your reception like that's such a terrible thing to do so can i hear from you ms mika most people don't want to have a bad memory associated with their wedding uh, and most people don't make up that there's not enough food so what do you have to say about that? Because that's like a pretty bad thing to have happen at a wedding. There should be an excess right. of food, particular because they had 140 guests. Right. Um, I had her guests coming up to me, asking for my cards, telling me how, how good of a job, how we're working hard. Um, I gave out a few of my business cards. I had a lady say that she had an event coming up. She wanted to, you know, talk to me further about it. So all of this People didn't eat. Every table ate. People were coming up for seconds. Where were the tea sandwiches? Said, well, Part of her complaint that there wasn't enough food was that there were no sandwiches, which she had expected based on, on the menu she had sent you. So what happened with the tea sandwiches? Well, the tea sandwiches, if you look at the document that I send you, it says, or maybe just one or two kinds of tea sandwiches and then stuff people can make their own sandwiches. This is from her. Also, we don't need all of these. They're just ideas. So on the table where you see the pictures, there were um, bread and things like that that they can make their own. What am I looking at here? Um, you're looking at the French toast uh, cups, um, the cracker platter. 
Um, What's this the salads, here? Salads that that's the breads and uh, rolls to make your own tuna. The veggie platter, the cream cheese, the salads on the side, stuff to make your own. Saint, build your own. What is this a picture of? The waffles and the waffles and chicken. Okay, it's very close up though. Like she had said that you were supposed to have like a you were supposed to be making it out there. What happened with that? When we first signed the contract, we were talking about she had an ideal of a brunch, which I thought was a good idea. I said um, I had did a couple of weddings where I made the waffles on site. So as people came down a buffet line, you know, get a hot waffle. I thought it would be a good idea. So uh, she said, oh, that would be a nice, nice added bonus. So when I got to the venue and saw how she had everything set up, the buffet line where I was serving the food was very close to a table. I couldn't push the table up to make a buffet line, you know, to plug in the waffle maker. Plus, there was only one um, outlet there for the coffee. So it was unfeasible for me to make waffles in front of people right on the line. The decision to make waffles on the line was something that I brought to her, but it wasn't etched in stone. So it wasn't never. Do you have a contract with her where everything is etched in stone? Because judges kind of like stone etching. Um, All right. You know, this is see, this is why folks, you're starting to pick up what I'm putting down on why contracts are so Mm -hmm. important and specificity is important. All right. So do you have any of those? My understanding is you have some bridesmaids with you who can talk to us about, all right, let me hear from the first one. All righty then. Let me hear, um, who's who? What's your name? (laughs) I'm Ashley. Ashley, and what's your name? I'm Danielle. Danielle. Yes. All right. Ms. Ashley, did uh, did you think there was enough food? And if not, what was the problem? I actually didn't. I didn't eat <laughs> at all. Um, by the time I went to the table, it was cleared off. It was probably about an hour after we had entered because um, about an hour after we had entered, I went to the table to look for food and there was barely anything there um, whatsoever. But did they, so is I it because it not... needed refilling and they eventually refilled it or there was never a refill after an hour? What are you saying? No, there was never a refill. Um, to my knowledge, there was never a refill. I didn't eat until the, until we ordered pizza later that night. Okay. How about you, Danielle? You tell me yours, your Um, story. My mother was my, uh, plus one guest. So, um, when my mom got back to her table, she said, there's not enough food. I got a little bit for you. You can just eat off of my plate. So that's what I ended up. Did you, did either of you ever go tell the, you know, say something to the caterer? No. Okay. I never saw. I, I, didn't, I see didn't see her. her. I, we knew she was in the kitchen. I assume she was in the kitchen, but no. Okay. Uh, go ahead and let the couple come back. And let me ask you, um, Ms. Jennifer, you had supplied a bunch of uh, emails from guests talking about uh, what this was like. The food selection was sparse. By the end of the day, because there wasn't sufficient food to feed everybody, I got pizza. I don't have the receipts. I paid 150 But, I mean, that's also because your reception went far past brunch, right? Which is great. Um, yes. But, Your Honor, if you look at the photos um, that even Mika posted, there's two sterno trays, which is, like, ridiculous for 140 people. This is, like, enough for maybe a party of 20 people. <laughs> Like that meat and cheese and cra- well, there's no cheese on the meat and cheese platter. The meat and crackers is what I would put out for a party of like game night for like five or ten people. See how she has those two sterno trays put horizontally, and then that small little round thing is what the eggs were in for 140 people, ma'am. What were in the and other two? The other tra- two. What were in the other had, two? The things? one of them had waffles and um, chicken in it, and the other one had bacon and sausage in it. Were the eggs in this tiny little round thing, Ms. Mika? Yes, it was. Ms. Yes, Mika, sure. yeah. Um, how's that going to work with 140 people? That seems rather small. Well, the the round container is actually bigger than it looks. No. But I don't have time to stand around and keep taking pictures of me replenishing. I got to cook. Well, nobody's. I I didn't ask you for pictures of you replenishing. I didn't expect that. She's showing me these pictures to show me how sparse 
the the food well, serving was for 140 people. That's what she's doing because well, please, she paid you two thousand five hundred and seventy five dollars, and she's upset that there wasn't <clears> enough food and that people were complaining about that. She's saying that these pictures are showing all the food I had, and that's just not okay. right. Okay, what's this um, a picture of? According to you, bride drinking at the what? At the that altar. That was the, our. The we did a, a beer pouring oh. cer- during our ceremony did instead you of really? like pouring sand. <laughs> We're both craft beer drinkers, so we I thought that would be cute to and, add to our ceremony. By, yeah, by the way, that beer was about 2.5% by ABV, so it was not strong at all. Right. <laughs> Another drink in hand. Oh, you're having me... It's crazy. You're noting for me that the bride has another, a different drink in her hand. Okay. <laughs> Every picture shows a different drink, not including the picture she deleted off her Facebook. Yes, there was a Your lot Honor, of am pictures. I not allowed to drink at my wedding? Actually, a very big pick that. of the bride at this point, though, she's red faced and another different drink in hand. I didn't know it was against the law to drink at your own wedding. This is a very hard yeah. thing to do unless I'm at your wedding. I don't know if there was, quote, enough food. And what does enough really mean? Like, you know, does enough mean um, there's sufficient amounts? Does enough mean everything that you asked for is there? I do see your text to her. You don't have a contract with her, which really bothers me, mostly on your part, because she's got the one wedding, but you are a caterer. So, uh, you know, I expect you so that expectations are managed. I expect there to be an exact list of what is going to be there. And you are very upset about things that aren't there. But I also do see texts where you say these are just ideas. You know, you don't have to go with 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 everything, you know, just maybe some of it. Like you're very kind of, you know, you're you're the perfect bride, you know, because you're just like you're not really being specific. So we have what we have, which is the Facebook post that you do still have. Um, but then you got blocked and, you know, and when she comes to court like that, I have to decide, all right, do I, you know, was this bad enough where I agree with her? And, you know, there hasn't, because at the end of the day, you picked brunch. Like the only thing that was missing were tea sandwiches, which I agree that could be if someone's not an egg eater and they're, you know, vegan. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a pretty big thing. I understand. That's the whole bunch part of the brunch. Okay. Um, I, I tend to agree with, with Miss Jennifer and Mr. Tom. I, and I understand that this wedding went long. I know that it went long. Uh, and I, I'm not going to award them the money that they're asking either. But I do think that some refund is appropriate. People ate. It's not like nobody ate. But nobody wants this to be the lasting memory of their wedding. Uh, I don't think they're making it up. And I don't think all of their witnesses are making it up. There seemed to have been a problem. Um, I also feel like when I look at the table, I felt like it felt sparse. I have to tell you, it didn't feel bountiful. Um, I'm ruling in favor of Ms. Jennifer and Tom on their claim, but not in the amount that they're asking. I'm going to authorize and order you to pay back half of the money for the catering. So I'm ruling in their favor in the amount of one thousand two hundred and eighty seven dollars and fifty cents. I'm sorry that it worked out that way, but you both, from looking at your pictures, strike me as the kind of people who will just add this to the memories of your wedding. And then we won at people's court and you will not. And and it looks like everybody had a great time. And uh, hopefully this doesn't leave any lasting sting because life is a series of challenges that we just have to keep hurtling over. And hopefully you'll do that for a long time together. Good luck to everyone. Yes, Your Honor. So after listening to all the testimony, the judge awards the uh, plaintiffs $1,280 back. Uh, Mika, let me ask you, how do you feel about this now? You, you lost the lawsuit and you got to give them back $1,280. That's, a, that's quite, a, quite a chunk. What are you thinking? Well, I would never want a bride and a groom to be dissatisfied. But unfortunately, um, they twisted and said certain things to make it in their favor and and maybe even coach their witnesses. So I I have to go with the with the judge on what they rule. I do a lot of weddings and I've never, ever, ever had anything like this happen to me. All right. Well, that's it. That's the judge's decision. Sorry about that. Let's talk to Jennifer and Tom. You did. You, you prevailed. You feel better now. You didn't get everything you wanted, but uh, you have prevailed. What about it? What do you think? Uh, well, <clears throat> obviously, uh, we didn't get the, the full amount, but um, we're just happy to uh, be moving on. And the, uh, the judge um, sided with us. 
So in any event, that's it. Hope, uh, hope, ha wedding life is happy. Are you, are you happy? Are you, are you glad you got married? How yeah. about that? Yeah. Very, very happy. <laughs> okay, that's what and very happy to that put this all behind us. Absolutely. <laughs> Very good. That's that's what really counts in the end. All right, that'll do it for this case. Let's hear from Harvey now. So when you have a contract like this, Doug, uh, for a wedding, a party, whatever it is, and you want certain things done by a caterer or something like that, be as specific as you can. Put everything in the contract, make it clear, down to what the appetizers are supposed to look like. The better you are specifically, the more you are protected. Can a community association make me move a registered camper from my front yard if it's been there since 2006? Also, other members of the, of the association have campers in the yard and no one's complained about them. Now the association's looking for a place to place a lien on my home if I don't pay the $3,000 fine. The zone I live in does say the RV has to be a certain distance from the back, but there's only one line in the documentation about that. Is it legal, <laughs> is it legal for them to place a lien on me? Yeah, this one little tiny line in the homeowners association regulations. Ah, but that's all it takes. That's all it takes, right? right? Like right. either you're allowed to have it or you're not. And right. uh, the rule about how far away from the front of the house it has to be is so that other people don't have it right in their grill. They don't see it, right? Right. Probably. So um, they absolutely have a right to tell you to remove it. And they absolutely have a right to fine you when you ignore them telling you to remove it. Right. And they absolutely have a right to place a lien. It's one of the things you agreed to when you moved in there. Right. They have a right to place a lien on your property until you pay the fine because they want you to listen to them. They don't want you to ignore them. Yeah. Now, if you if they try to enforce the lien and you're in a court of law and your argument is, but everybody else has selective one the same size. Right. This is selective enforcement because they don't like me because I rabble rouse. OK, yeah. then right. maybe you, we're going to get somewhere and you'll have right. some kind of defense. Right. But if the rule is the rule and you're the one who's violating it because yours is so big. Right. Yeah, that's going to be a problem. Um, size matters. With our yes, needs, size right? matters. <laughs>